Hello YouTube land. Hey guys, my name's Kent or Kenty Poo is the name of my channel and I just got the Pimax 5k plus um, I've been playing with it now for four or five days and I don't like it. I like my I have a Vive, I have a Vive Pro. Uh, before that, I had a Rift Dev Kit 2 and a Dev Kit 1. Um, I had a Dev Kit 1 way back in um, almost five years, a little over five years ago, I got my Dev Kit, my Oculus Dev Kit 1. Um, the Pimax to me is a serious letdown. You know, ever since. Since I put the dev kit one on my face five years ago, I wanted a wider field of view. I just always wanted a wider field of view, of course, and um, always felt a little constricted. Um, so this was $800. And... That's after $50 shipping and $50 tax. Came all the way from China. And I would return it if I could. I don't know if I can because it's not broken. I mean, there's no... It's broken. <laughs> there's no physical problems with it, I guess. Software problems? No, I don't. It's not broken, but it... The, my biggest gripe... Its biggest selling point is the wide field of view, but that's also its biggest problem because distortion and warping outside of 70 to 80 degrees, objects in your peripheral, objects outside of 70 to 80 degrees out start getting squished and they're not rendered properly. They're not... Um, they're not just blurry in your outer peripheral, but they're also squished, smaller than they would be in real life. You look over at them and they're the right size, you turn your head, you look over them with your eye, and now they're smaller than they should be. Distorted, warped, like in a fishbowl, looking through a fisheye lens. Um, and because the objects are scaled improperly in your peripheral they tend to kind of like they expand as they get in the center of your peripheral and they shrink as they get set outside of your peripheral they yeah they they expand to the regular size as they get in the center of your view and as they get into your peripheral they get squished and they shrink and so they almost seem like they're moving objects and the picture in your outside peripheral, outside 78 degrees, move unnaturally while, you're he while you move around. It's very discombobulating um, and it makes you feel uneasy, makes you feel a little queasy. And for VR rookies, I would not put them in a Pimax right away. They'll be like, ugh, VR is not for me. That is some sickness inducing stuff. Even in the, the small field of view, the 120 field of view, um, it's kind of bad. There's still warping and distortion even in the 120 horizontal uh, field of view setting. On the Pimax, there's three settings. The large field of view setting, the medium field of view setting, and the small field of view setting. When I measured the large field of view setting, it measured at 158 horizontal field of view. And when I measured the small field of view setting, it measured at 120 degrees horizontal field of view. Um, the vertical field of view is measured at, I measured it at 105 degrees field of view. So the things in your peripheral, they're not just blurry, but they are also squished and distorted and rendered improperly. Um, Also, it's $800 to get here, and it doesn't come with any controllers, and it doesn't come with any lighthouses. See, there's a lighthouse up there that does the tracking. That's an HTC Vive lighthouse that does the tracking. 
Um, it doesn't come with any ear earphones either. Basically, just the heads the uh, the headset with a fabric uh, elastic and Velcro strap for it. So I'm trying to return it because to me it's just not worth $800 and we'll see what happens with that. Um, I would rather play wirelessly with my Vive, my original Vive, and then I prefer my Vive Pro over, over my original Vive. Um, also a big pet peeve of mine is the scale of of pretty much every game has been enlarged so it seems like a little bit maybe 10% too big like say, the vertical field of view of the Vive is about 95 degrees and I, me I measured the, this uh, the Pimax to be 105 degrees and it feels like things are about 10 degrees to or 10% too big like Pi, Pimax did something with their driver to just make everything a little bit too big. And I I prefer things to be one-to-one -one scale real life, and they're not with the Pimax. They're a little bit too big. Um, they are working on a wireless module, but it doesn't look like there's going to be happening for at least a year. They're still trying to get out their own lighthouses and their own controllers and it took them a really long time just to get out the headset, so I don't know how long, it's gonna take a while to get the wireless thing out. Um, also, the LCD screens in here are not as bright as the OLED screens in my Vive. Um, and they're also, the darks aren't as dark, so the picture just seems kind of dimmed, it kind of just seems muted, it's not near as vibrant as the HTC Vive's OLED screen. Um, also, when I want to play, I have to plug in the HTC Vive's, and when I'm done playing, or the, I have to plug in these lighthouses back here, and there's one over here as well. I have to plug those into the wall or toggle the toggle it uh, uh, or turn them on with say a power strip or something like that because the headset doesn't communicate with them. Uh, on the HTC Vive there's a breakout box and the breakout box has a Bluetooth a Bluetooth module in it that uh, communicates over Bluetooth to the two lighthouses in my room and it turns them on when I'm playing in it and it puts them into a sleep mode when I'm not playing. But the Pimax did not come with a breakout box so I don't see, I don't know how they're going to be able to communicate with the lighthouses to turn them off and on ever. Because the breakout, the, the Vive, the HTC Vive breakout box has an HDMI input and the end of the Pimax cord is a DisplayPort cord so you can't plug the DisplayPort cord into the, the breakout box of the HTC Vive. Uh, that's another downside of the Pimax is because there is no breakout box that makes the, the cord on the, on the Pimax about that much shorter. At least at least four feet shorter. So the Pimax cord is about four feet shorter than the HTC Vive cord, and it's the Pimax cord is barely long enough for me to walk around this small room here. This ten by ten foot room is just barely long. When I get over in that corner over there, I'm kind of like, it's a little yanks on my head a little bit. Um, so I can just barely get in that corner, especially if I want to turn around and stay in that corner and look this way. It's I can feel the cord, you know. Um, what else? There's a there's a power button. There's volume rockers, and there's a light on the front of this thing. And I don't know why. I, if if I designed it, it wouldn't have any of that stuff. That just adds more expense and more weight to it. 
There's also a little LED light there, and this thing lights up here in the front as well. Um, that just adds more cement and more weight, and you don't need any of that stuff because you, the, the Vive doesn't have it. You, I don't think the Rift has it. You just quick push the steam button and you go into your steam VR and you can just control the volume real easily right from there and you can exit VR right from there and it turns off everything. Um, when you do that with the Pimax, when you go into the steam and you say power off, uh, exit VR, um, you can still adjust the volumes like you can with the Vive inside steam VR. But when you, when you go inside, when you push the steam button on your controller and then you say exit VR, it doesn't shut down the lighthouses. It doesn't shut down this. You have to hold down the power button for about five seconds in order to shut down the headset. Um, also, you have to have another tool running on your PC called the Pi tool. And, um, There's in the in the Pi tool now you have more settings where you can try to optimize your game or your experience. So there's a lot more settings that you have to mess with, and it adds another bug, another friction point. Um, a lot of times when you change the settings in the Pi tool, it doesn't update instantly. Then you have to reboot the headset within Pi tool. And then you have to reboot Steam VR, and you have to reboot the game. So you're, and then, and then, oh, the game still doesn't run right. Okay, you gotta shut down Steam VR and the game, and then change some settings in Pi Tool, reboot the headset within Pi Tool. Sometimes you gotta even reboot the Pi Tool software. Sometimes you gotta reboot your machine for the settings to take effect. It's very buggy. It's a lot of friction. There's a lot of stuff to fight with to try to get your game to run properly. Um, also because they made, they're like increasing the scale of the, of the game or stretching it further across your, your bigger field of view. A lot of games don't, are no, are no longer one to one with your chaperone. So if you move around, you kind of see the world, the, the video game world kind of drifts and doesn't stick with your chaperone and I and there are a few games that do that slightly like raw data on the Vive but with this they seem to do it a lot worse like the chaperone the games drift a lot more they they s slide a lot more and don't stay one to one with the chaperone scale which I don't like that at all either um, what else I have some notes here. It does some good. A good thing about it is it actually does have a wider field of view. You can actually look over in your peripheral, and you can look at the the object that's over there. Um, like with the Vive or the Rift, with the round lenses, if you move your eyes over, like you can see something in your peripheral, and it's, it might be kind of blurry with the Vive or the Rift. And if you look over at it, and it's way in your peripheral, you can no longer see it, it like disappears because now your eye, your eye, your iris, or your pupil moved further over, and now it's like on the edge of the lens, and then there's black on this side lens, so the black will, will crop out your peripheral. You can actually see more of your peripheral in the Rift and the Vive by looking forward than you can by turning your eyes naturally to the side. So that is a cool thing about the Pimax is you can actually do that, but they're also squished and blurry. They're blurry in the Vive and the Rift in your peripheral as well, but the blurry area on the Pimax is bigger and there's distortion in the edges. There's no distortion or warping on the Vive and the Rift um, in your peripherals or on the, on, the, on the outsides of the lenses. Um, so in my opinion, I wouldn't buy this. If you have a Rift or a Vive, stick with that. Don't feel like you're missing out. I mean, you're never gonna know until you try it. Some people are saying they, they prefer the Pimax. 
And some people are saying they prefer, they're getting the Pimax and they're preferring their, their riffs and their vibes over the Pimax. So I just wanted to give my opinion and you know, if you're really feeling like you want a Pimax 5K and you feel like you're missing out, you might not be. I don't think you are. <laughs> I don't think you're missing out. You're not missing out. At least your world is not distorted and it moves properly when you look around. That's all I got. Thanks for watching, everybody. Talk to you later.